PTC Creo Parametric 3.0, Lesson 12, Part 2. In this portion of the lesson, we're going to put in a table, and I put one in already so I can refer to it as we go. We'll do it step by step. So zoom into your title block area. We're going to work just above it. Click on Table, and we're going to have a table with five columns and two rows. So select that, put it somewhere above your title block, deselect, and we're going to make each one of these one inch. So one inch, make sure you put your cursor over the top and get both blocks. This one is going to be 0.75. And this one will be one. And the middle one is going to be the largest. And that's going to be four inches. I'm going to change the column, or I should say the row height, by double clicking on the one of the edges with it all of it highlighted and that will be 0.375 so and once it's selected you can select it in a variety of ways we're going to move it down approximately where we want it to go we can be more precise than that if we want all right so <clears throat> the next thing so we're going to put in this information along the bottom here so we're going to just type it in these are just titles, nothing else. And the, they are larger than they need to be. We're going to change that. And the last one is QTY for quantity. And when we're done with that, then we can also deselect and then select all the text. Right mouse button text style. And we'll make it 0.125. Now, if you click in each one of these blocks, one thing we didn't bother to do, if you click on format up here, you'll see that you can change and make it centered. Right. The other way to do it is if you select all of them, right mouse button text style and we can make them centered and middle in the text style dialog instead so either way working one at a time or with all of them at the same time all right so the next thing is we're going to put in some repeat areas repeat region select that and we're going to add and click on one of the blocks and then the block on the other side for the table It'll put that red repeat region in. I'm going to select attributes, and then you have to select the repeat region that you're working on. No duplicates and recursive, so it'll list all the parts of the assembly and leave everything like it is. We'll list the subassembly also, those parts. Done return. Done. Now we're going to fill in this information. So if we double click on the first block, it's going to give us our report symbols. And we want this one to be a repeat and index. And on the opposite end, it's the same thing. Repeat, but this time it's quantity. And then we have PRTNO. So this one is a user defined one. So it's assembly member user defined P R T N O. Now this corresponds to the <clears throat> parameters that we're going to build into every one of the components. And let's double click on the middle one here. And this one is going to be an assembly member and user defined again. And this one is DSC. 
have to do these identically, exactly like you do the parameter, otherwise it won't read that information in. And then we have material. So this is assembly member PTC material and PTC material name. And when we selected our material for every one of the components, that's what they will use to read into this particular table for our bill of materials, like so. Now, again, with this one, if we want to change our height, let's go make that uh, 0.1. We might want to change the size later, but let's leave it like that for now. Otherwise, also for the format, let's see, let's go and we, let's center each one of these. So I'll zoom in. So kind of after the fact that we've done that. And it looks like pretty much the same as what we've got up on the top there. These were, I think, a little bit larger in size. I made mine a little bit smaller this time. So we've got all our information read in there. At this point, I think I'll take this one out and delete it. Now you want to save this and we're going to use it when we do our assembly drawing later but we have to first go and do all the components make sure each one of them has the correct parameters in there and have everything set as we wish it to be before we do our assembly drawing but this assembly format can be used in any drawing that uses these particular user-defined names that we've established.